This is the San Andreas Fault. Well, more specifically, this is a pressure ridge caused by the plates of the San Andreas Fault scraping past each other with tremendous force. Last year, I made a video about the San Andreas Fault that got a lot of attention from all kinds of viewers, including people living in the US who wish that California would be destroyed by a catastrophic earthquake. Where's your humanity? Humanity aside, it's incredibly naive to think that the big one in California won't affect the whole country. It's all connected. Today, we're gonna be focusing on US shipping infrastructure infrastructure and the unique role Los Angeles plays in it. Even if you don't live in California, it might be an important thing to understand just how critical Los Angeles is for everyone. Everyone? Everyone! Well, everyone in the US. To our viewers in India, this is just an interesting video to watch. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! I'm data. I'm standing here near Lake Palmdale, California, overlooking the California 14 freeway. And behind me, you can see the remarkable effects that the San Andreas Fault has had on the Ana Verde Formation. How come we just see it here? Because this was cut for the highway to pass through it. Which brings us to what I find interesting. This freeway is crossing right through the fault line. It's literally crossing over from one tectonic plate to another. That sounds bad. Well, this fault is a lateral fault, which means that it's shifting horizontally. More specifically, the Pacific plate is moving northward in relation to the North American plate. Aren't our freeways supposed to be earthquake proof? Well, that's a very interesting question, depending on what you mean by earthquake proof. California is no stranger to earthquakes and their effect on its infrastructure. In 1994, the Northridge earthquake shook Los Angeles, doing considerable damage to the area. Not only did this 6.7 earthquake kill people and destroy homes, but it also crumbled freeways. Specifically, it destroyed parts of the I-5 California 14 interchange, as well as part of the I-10 freeway. In Los Angeles, we say the before the freeway numbers. This is the I-5 California 14 interchange. It's a complex web of ramps going in all different directions. And in 1994, several sections of this highway collapsed, including some of the ramps on this interchange. This seems like a big interchange. It's a major choke point for people connecting from Los Angeles to Northern California. Within a matter of hours after the Northridge earthquake, Caltrans and the city and county established detours through the surrounding surface streets, closing off this section of highway entirely for repairs. At that time, trucks made up about 13% of all traffic on the I-5. After the freeway collapsed, truck traffic decreased by about 30%. Where did they go? Some trucks took alternate routes using the US 101, Others took the I-15 the long way around. It took four months for Caltrans to rebuild and reopen the highway. Thankfully, these detours were able to offload the freight traffic until the highway reopened. Oh, so if there's another earthquake, we can just use detours? Well, what would happen if an interstate highway was severed and there weren't any detours? For that, we have to go out to the desert. This is Coachella, California, about two hours east of Los Angeles. Here, we find that Interstate 10 crosses the fault line. Now, I don't know exactly where the fault line crosses the highway, but according to the United States Geological Survey, it looks like it crosses around the Coachella Canal right here at this bridge. Right here? Approximately. Remember, the San Andreas Fault is a lateral fault, which means that each plate is sliding past each other horizontally. If the fault slipped right here at this bridge, wouldn't that be pretty bad for the bridge? I'm not just talking about an earthquake shaking the bridge like in the Northridge earthquake. I'm talking about one side of the bridge being ripped apart from the other. How do you know the bridge will be ripped apart? Well, I don't, but we do see other examples of fault lines ripping roads apart. In 2019, the desert town of Ridgecrest, California was hit by two major earthquakes two days in a row. The second one being a 7.1 magnitude earthquake. In this remote area, we can see how roads that crossed the fault were literally severed. This road was shifted by about eight feet. Well, that seems pretty awful. Well, 
Thankfully, these were rather remote roads, but what if a similar earthquake on the San Andreas shifted the interstate highways? Now, I'm no expert, but consider this. The fault is moving at about 20 to 35 millimeters per year. And the last time the San Andreas slipped in Southern California was probably about 300 years ago. So does that mean that when the big one hits, all of that pent up tension will be released in one big slip? If so, that would be a slip of about six meters. That's about the width of a two lane highway. Won't that sever the highway? How will a freeway stay intact if all of a sudden it shifts to the side? Haven't we made all of our main highways stronger? Well. Yes. In recent decades, California has gone through a lot of retrofitting, the process of trying to increase the structural integrity of roads and bridges. But I don't know how that will help a bridge that crosses over the fault line. I mean, how can a bridge still stand if its endpoints have shifted? Well, if the I-10 breaks, can't people just use detours? The I-10 crosses the fault line right here on the edge of the desert. There aren't any surface streets here like there were on the I-5. Well, if the I-10 breaks, can't people just use the other highways? You mean the other highways that also cross the fault line? All highways in and out of Los Angeles cross the same fault line. Here is a map from the Federal Highway Administration showing the major freight corridors for California. The I-5, the I-10, and the I-15 are the three major freight routes in and out of Los Angeles. According to a 2008 study, each of these highways service more than 8,500 trucks a day. And more importantly, all three of these highways cross the San Andreas Fault. When the big one hits, will the entire fault line shift or will it just slip in one spot? I'm not sure, but even if we could create alternative routes, that could be a huge detour for trucks shipping goods into Los Angeles. How will emergency services be able to get into Los Angeles? How will people be able to evacuate out of the area? This will be a terrible disaster for everyone in California. You said this would affect people outside of California. Right, these infrastructure problems don't just affect people in California, they affect everyone. Everyone? Everyone! Well, everyone in the US. Let's take a look at one final piece of critical infrastructure in California. This is the port of Los Angeles, and over there is the port of Long Beach. These twin ports are the largest in the Western Hemisphere. They are responsible for 40% of all shipping containers imported into the US and 30% of all containers exported out of the US. Most of these ships are importing goods from Asia. That's a lot of iPhones. Oh, it's not just electronics. The number of shipping containers, or 20-foot equivalent units, is much higher than other goods. What kind of goods? The top five imports of 2022 were footwear, plastics, apparel, auto parts, and the number one import was furniture. These items are pretty critical to our everyday lives, and the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach are critical to shipping them into the US. In 2021, the ports here had a huge backup. The cargo ships were queuing up all along the coast. Container ships had to wait for ages to unload their cargo. That was a huge disruption to goods imported into the US, and that wasn't due to a disaster or anything. It was just supply chain issues. What would happen if all of Los Angeles was shut down for weeks or even months? What if all roads leaving Los Angeles were severed or severely damaged? How would Americans be able to get their goods? We're talking about baby diapers and brake pads. Can the ships go to another port? Is there another port that can handle this volume of traffic? Here is a map of the largest ports in the US. Port of Los Angeles and Long Beach are definitely the largest, followed by Port of New Jersey and New York. Port of Oakland is really the only other large port on the West Coast. Most of the other big ports are on the East or Gulf Coasts. Well, can't we just ship to the East Coast instead? How will the boats get there? We're shipping most of these products from Asia. Well, can't we reroute them to the Panama Canal? That's a huge diversion. And honestly, a lot of these ships are too big to even fit in the Panama Canal. Well, can't these ships go all the way around? You mean around the Horn? All the way around South America? that's about three times the distance. At that point, it might actually be quicker to go the other way around the globe. I'm just speculating at this point, but this sounds like a huge increase in time and money. No one knows when the big one will hit. I heard someone say it'll happen in 28 days. People will always say that they can predict the next big earthquake and they'll use some sort of pseudoscience, but really it's just as interpretive as Nostradamus or the Bible code. Bible code. But regardless, the big one is coming. It's not like we can avoid it. The tectonic plates won't just stop moving for us. They've been doing this for millions of years. Every year that we don't have an earthquake is another year that the tension will build up on the fault, making the eventual big one that much worse. No matter how you cut it, 
Port of Los Angeles and Long Beach are critical ports for all Americans, and they're just on the wrong side of the fault line from the rest of the country. All roads in and out of Los Angeles cross the San Andreas Fault. If an earthquake were to hit Los Angeles, it would be bad for everyone. Everyone? Yes, everyone. Now, I'm no expert. I'm just sort of connecting the dots using publicly available data. But if you know someone who is actually knowledgeable about this problem, please let me know, and I'd love to find out more specific information from them. But one thing seems clear to me. If you wish for an earthquake to destroy California, causing agony to millions of people, then you sound like a terrible human being. Where's your humanity? But more practically, you're not really understanding the scope of this catastrophe. Even if you emigrate to a different part of the US, you don't really solve this problem since most everyone in the US will probably be affected by the economic impact of this interstate outage. The big one is a problem we're all gonna have to face in some way. Well, maybe the big one won't be so bad. I hope that you're right.